Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is Mindy here, and today I'm really excited to talk about all of the fragrances that I brought into my collection for the month of March. And in all honesty, I consider all of these to be successful blind buys, which is fantastic. I don't usually have that. Um, usually there's one or two that I'm not really crazy about, um, but this month I love them all. Now one of them, I would consider a little bit of a risk. Um, I'll talk about that in a moment. It's more of a vintage perfume, and so I'll share some details on that as well. Um, but generally speaking, these are all appropriate for the springtime, and I'm gonna get use out of them immediately. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first fragrance that I'm gonna talk about is La Ha Blu. Apologies if I'm not saying that correctly. This is by Guerlain, and I have the smaller bottle. So the vintage bottle, um, the most recognizable bottle, um, comes in sort of the larger size, I believe a 3.4 ounce, and I do have a smaller version. And this fragrance is unlike anything else I have in my collection. It truly transports you to a different place in time. It has a very vintagey feel, and from this I pick up cloves, um, some powderiness, and some floral. I don't think this is a fragrance that I would wear on a regular basis because of that vintage vibe, uh, but I do want to see how this wears on my skin. I'm definitely curious about it. There's a town in Colorado, it's an old mining town, it's called Leadville, and every year we go there for a festival. And that festival, we go um, explore some antique shops, we go into um, an old hotel, we do some fun things up there, people get dressed up. And this is the type of fragrance that I see transporting you back to another place in time and sort of the vibe that I get from that old mining town. When I walk into the antique shop, this is almost the scent that I pick up when I go in there. Again, it's heavy on the cloves, you get the powderiness, but there's a lot of different notes in this fragrance and I won't go through them all right now, but I do think this would be a very interesting fragrance to pick up if you wanted to explore vintage fragrances. This fragrance is very inexpensive and one that I was trying to decide if I wanted versus Mitsuko, there's Jiki by Guerlain, there's Samsara, a whole bunch of sort of vintage fragrances that I've wanted to explore and get a sense for how they smell. And this one was really fun to try out. I think a lot of people would appreciate this scent. I don't know if you want to smell like this. I don't know that everyone would want to smell like this, um, but it's certainly a fragrance that you can appreciate and recognize some of the history that came into this fragrance. I'm completely mesmerized by some of the reviews on this fragrance. I've gone through a series of them on both Parfumo and Fragrantica, and so many of them are poetic and romantic, and they take you on this sort of journey of this fragrance. They take you back in time. Um, somebody mentioned that this fragrance was released in 1912, um, apparently the same year that the Titanic ship sunk, and makes you wonder where women on that ship wearing this fragrance sort of takes you back. And, you know, I wish I had a time machine to see how this fragrance was used back then. And I think a lot of people would be able to appreciate this fragrance today. People reference this as a masterpiece, as melancholy. Um, it's sultry, it's heavy. Um, just an interesting fragrance. And if you're interested in getting sort of that vintage vibe, I think this is an amazing fragrance that would do that for you. Again, this is La Ha Bleu by Guerlain. Sorry if I'm not saying that right. Okay, the next fragrance that I added to my collection in the month of March is Amber Oud Gold by Alperamain. And I did not like this fragrance when I first tested it on paper. The melon in this fragrance is very strong. I'm wearing it on my skin right now and I pick up a strong aquatic quality, um, sort of like the quality that I get from Delina La Rose. I don't like that fragrance particular because of that aquatic quality, um, but in this one I actually do like it. Once I tested this on my skin, I actually really did like the fragrance. To my nose, it does lean a little bit masculine, but I think more people actually think it's feminine. So I think it just depends on your nose and how you interpret this scent, um, but definitely one that I think is very, very nice. I get sweetness, I get fruitiness, definitely that melon stands out, um, woodiness and warmth from the amber. 
I think this is one a lot of people will enjoy. If you enjoy unisex fragrances, I think this is perfect. Again, to my nose, it leans a little bit masculine, but I think it can be interpreted differently depending on the person. I'm really excited to play around with this fragrance a little bit more. I got it a couple nights ago, so I haven't had the opportunity to play around with it and experiment with it, but it's definitely one that I think I'll enjoy and one that I think I'll appreciate on my skin. That is Amber Oud Gold by Al Haramain. Okay, I also added two angels to my collection this month. One is Angel Eau Crocier, and this is the 2020 version, um, so not the mango version. And this is the Angel EDT. Both of these will make awesome fragrances to have in the spring. Both of them are sweet, both of them are sort of fruity. Uh, the EDT has a little bit more of a sparkling, fresh, vibrant quality. It's zesty and I definitely get the red berries that are in this fragrance. Excited to explore this one through the spring months. And Eau Croisier, actually, am I saying that right? Eau Croisier? Eau Croisier? I don't know. Um, this fragrance, first of all, the bottle is stunning. I love the bottles for the Angel Collection. But this one smells like a fruity, tropical drink that you would have in Mexico. Sort of smells like a pina colada to me. But the interesting thing about this fragrance is that it doesn't have coconut in it. Um, it actually has fig nectar, praline, patchouli, magnolia, and vanilla. And I feel like I'm picking up coconut from this, but that must be the fig leaf. Both of these angel fragrances came at a very reasonable price on FragranceNet, and I'm happy to have them in my collection. Both of these fragrances will be amazing fragrances for the spring and summer months. They're zesty, they're vibrant, they're sparkling, they're fruity, um, very fun fragrances, and I think they both smell very, very nice. So um, awesome adds to my collection, excited to start wearing these, and I think they are crowd-pleasing scents that most people would appreciate and enjoy. The next fragrance that I picked up is Hannah by Hannah Mori. Is it Hane or Hannah? Hannah, Hane? I don't know. Um, apologies if I'm saying this wrong. Again, I'm butchering all these names, but this is a beautiful scent. I've mentioned multiple times that I wish there was a flower bomb fragrance that had a little bit more oomph, and I think this one fills that void for me. So I have Flower Bomb here and I played around with them a little bit this morning. Hane Mori has just a little bit more of a fruity vibe. There is Wild Strawberry in here, there's Toffee in here, whereas Flower Bomb tends to lean maybe the slightest bit more floral. But I do think this is an amazing fragrance to try out for somebody who wants to get this vibe but doesn't want to pay Flower Bomb prices. Both of them have tea in them. This has wild strawberry, apple. It's less floral, as I mentioned, but really a beautiful scent. This is an amazing alternative to Flower Bomb. I think some people would actually prefer this to Flower Bomb. I love the fruitiness from it, but I don't think it's done in a juvenile way. It's just very pretty to my nose. I think some people would prefer this to Flower Bomb. I may actually prefer this to Flower Bomb. The longevity seems nice. I put this on in an evening once and I could still smell it in the morning. In terms of projection, I'm not totally sure. Um, it seems like it might be similar to Flower Bomb projection, which we all know isn't that great, um, but a very, very nice alternative to Flower Bomb. Definitely interested in checking out what else is in this collection since I like this fragrance so much. Again, that is Hane by Hane Mori. The last fragrance I want to talk about is La Belle Le Parfum. This is one that I've been anxiously awaiting adding to my collection, and I recently did a dedicated review on it. So if you're interested in that, I'll link it down below. This is a fragrance that is an instant love. You can absolutely pick up on that original LaBelle quality, the original LaBelle DNA, it is very much there. But this fragrance to me goes warmer, deeper, cozier, um, just has more depth to my nose. Now, it has a little bit of a cinnamon quality to it, but there is not cinnamon listed in the notes. So I don't know where I'm picking that up. Maybe it's the tonka, the hazelnut, um, the amber that um, some people say is in this fragrance. I also get a little bit of fruitiness, like cherry, which I absolutely love in this version. 
This fragrance sort of reminds me, um, you know, if you compare the original LaBelle to LaBelle Le Parfum, that relationship is very similar to how I think of the original Mon Guerlain to Mon Guerlain Intense, or the original Coco Mademoiselle to the Coco Mademoiselle Intense. Again, the same sort of relationship where they go deeper, they go warmer, they go more vanillic, and I get that same sort of feel and relationship from this fragrance. Spoiler alert, of the two labels, this is the one that I actually prefer more. I like the depth in this fragrance, and I do think that might be an unpopular opinion. A lot of people like the, um, the sweetness, the juiciness from the pear in the original, but I just love the depth and the warmth that you get from this fragrance. I think this one would be beautiful on a cool summer night. You're out at a brewery, you're getting a little bit of a breeze. I think the sillage from this fragrance would be wonderful. I also think this fragrance would be amazing in the winter time because of that warmth and depth. Um, but I really enjoy this fragrance and I'm grateful to have it in my collection. One last fragrance that I didn't mention so far that is on its way to me right now is Mastiamat. It hasn't arrived yet. That is the Lancome fragrance, um, one of the diamonds in the white bottle. Very excited to add that to my collection. Of all of the must fragrances that I've tried out recently, it was the standout fragrance that I enjoyed the most, so I cannot wait to have that one arrive as well. Thank you all for watching my video today. I'm really enjoying some of these new fragrances that I've added to my collection. As always, I really appreciate you guys subscribing. I appreciate you guys watching. And thank you for all of the engagement in the comments section. I'm truly enjoying interacting with you guys. Until next time, I'll see you soon.